Here, this is John with Only Kid with a Camera, back again. You know, we did our first one at Christmas time last time too. I know. So it's kind of like we're back. At I know. The very first thing I ever did was November. Different tree, same lights. Yep, that's exactly right. Yeah, we're going to do something really fun tonight. We've been talking about a long time. Jeff and I always talk about music, um, and <laughs> we've for years we've talked about how our favorite songs all the songs really that we love there's always an inevitable sweet spot a moment in the song that's just that thing that you wait for and you can't wait for it well you can wait for it that's part of the pleasure of it is waiting for it to come and then it comes and it's like oh so tell tell them about so, it so this is something that i've thought about a lot and is you and i are both music freaks and People are musical freaks at different levels. Some people are into the trivia, they're into the artists, they want to follow the personalities. We do a little of that, but I'm just so in love with the sound waves. Yes, the music. It's all about the music. It is for me too. And something I started noticing a few years back was that I would look forward to certain moments in a song. Yes. And I've actually never heard anybody ever talk about this before. I haven't either. Now... That doesn't mean that people don't think about it, and this is actually a thing that everybody does. Yes. But a lot of the songs that we love and adore have a moment that I would that we call the sweet spot. Not surprisingly, the sweet spot is often the crescendo of the song or the peak of the song. You know, it's the climax of the song. Yes. And everything that comes after it's kind of a little bit of a anticlimax. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway. We st- I started thinking about this. I kind of started cataloging them in my mind, and there's a couple of songs in particular that the very first that were the very first ones that I thought this is the sweet spot of this song. And then as soon as I thought of that, I told you I said, listen to this song at this moment. That is the sweet spot of the song. Yes. And whenever you're listening to the song, you kind of go, mm, and it plays, <laughs> yeah. and it's what you wait for. The whole song doesn't depend on it, but. It just makes it extra good. It's the whipping cream on top of it. It's yes. the cherry on it's, the whipping cream. Yes, unless you don't like cherries. No. These are very personal. So I'm it's, not saying this should be your sweet spot. Right. Not at all. Right. What I'm saying is that embrace this, and as you listen to music, think, what is it about this song that hits me at this moment that is a sweet spot? And just start to kind of catalog those. And it's just kind of, it's kind of like stamp collecting. You know, we collect music, we listen to music, we accumulate it in our brains, and these sweet spots are kind of part of that. So, uh, oftentimes the sweet spot is not necessarily what they even thought of as the hook. If you know what I'm saying. No, no. Like I think a lot of the sweet spots in these songs are things that the, that the producers and the artists probably never really thought of as being a sweet spot for anyone in particular. But for me, I know that a lot of mine are. A lot of people might kind of shake their head and go, "Really? That's the <laughs> that's, that's the, the whole point, though. Is that it's so personal." Jeff and I, being music fanatics since we were kids, really, we've been music nuts. There was one song that eluded me forever, and there was this one little moment that stuck in my head from the time I was a kid, and it's this: "So very hard to go." So very hard to go. From the time I was a kid, through a teenager, through young adult, through 30s, 40s, 50s, I could not figure out what that hook was. I know what it is. You know what it is, yes. And then one day, about three years ago, I was in a grocery store, and all of a sudden, there it was, that lick, that little moment. I was in shock. I was in the grocery store just going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this, this is it, this is it. And I actually went to this thing counter and, went and asked for the manager. I said, you have to tell me, please, you have to tell me, what is the song that's playing on your system right How now? How could he know that? It all comes in through satellite. You or... didn't use the Google? I did try that. So before you play this, yes, this is on my list of songs for the other show. We're basically songs that I've known all my life. And then when I actually put on my headphones and listen to it in real life for the first time, it's like, holy crap, this song is amazing. Yes. It is an amazing R&B song. Yes. And it's just beautiful from 1973. 
I'm so glad that you know the background oh. on it. I, I re- came to realize why I had not heard it again, because it's a fairly obscure song. It, it was a hit when we were kids, but it was not one of those songs like the Motown. Because it, it wasn't a band that had a big stable of hits. That's either. right. But the thing is, is that everybody from the era is going to know this song when they hear it. Yes, and it's such a funky It's cool freaking amazing. Song. Here's a funny thing is this song has only come into my stable of beloved songs probably in the last six months. The thing that's so intriguing to me about this is it was that one little moment, that vocal thing that had been sticking in my mind for decades. But play it from the start. Start this because okay. the way it starts is just so cool. It's okay. Just, it just starts. <laughs> Nothing I can do I feel so bad Yeah I feel so blue It's really a brilliant composition It is And the guitar and the, everything about it is, I got to You could teach a master class about songwriting With this song as your centerpiece Yeah, absolutely Even if it's me it Does everything a great song should do Yes. What's getting bad? Cause I could never make you unhappy. No, I couldn't do that, girl. Only wish I did love you so. Makes it so, so very hard to go. This is the thing. Okay, you got to admit that that's really trippy, that that little vocal lick, it had stuck in my brain from the time I was a kid, and it, I couldn't let go of it. I was I was literally on a search for it for decades. That's funny. I think one thing that's so great about that song is that like vocally, it's very understated. Yeah, it, um, yes. But to me, that song, its backbone is that change at the chorus. That's the master hook right you mean there. when it goes to the because i could never yes. make yeah when, yeah. It, when it changes to yeah. that that's yeah. when, if you if you're not paying attention that's where it grabs you and if it doesn't grab you then you're probably not alive <laughs> <laughs> you're not alive <laughs> now that is an amazing freaking song it is it really is and it's a song i think just like you said you know you'd heard it for years and it wasn't until i turned and really faced it and listened to it close and realized this is an amazing song yes it's in my stable of heavy rotation songs now for sure yes, and, and isn't that great though that we you and i complain about you know the state of modern music that a song that's literally exactly 50 years old this summer yeah that we could essentially rediscover it and it gives us the same joy as if it was July of 1973 totally. when it first came out. It sounds as fresh and clean and delicious as it did the day it came out. It's almost like as a kid, I could not really appreciate how amazing it was. But there was something that was kept saying. Oh, you recognized it for yeah, sure. Yeah. You just didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know. But when I hear it now, I'm just going, what a masterful piece of music that is. I mean, that's what the Beatles are all about. You hear this music and like, there's something about it. I just love it. I'm only nine years old, but there's something really cool about this. Yes. Speaking of the Beatles, Beatles disclaimer. The reason why we're not including any Beatles songs on this sweet spots is because they suck. <laughs> they don't allow you to use any of their music, which I understand they got ripped off like crazy when they were young. And Apple is constantly on the search for anyone that uses any of their music. I understand that. It's so unfortunate because we would love to pay our respects and our homage to these guys who we admire so much, but we cannot yeah, use screw their you, music. Paul. <laughs> for a couple of mine, especially the, the first one I'm going to mention, it's clearly the moment in the song where everything just becomes super sweet yeah yeah and and you know the song does peak there at least the first one that i'm going to play for, all right. for us the songs i'm going to play tonight are all very popular songs for the most part and yeah. so i have no doubt that anybody who's looking at this right now that is about our age will recognize this song <laughs> oh gee so the great thing about this song though 
is that you know it's the Carpenters, it's Superstar, um, and Leon Russell wrote this. Song. Yes, and the thing that's wonderful about this song is that it became acceptable to be a Carpenters fan thanks to Tommy Boy. I don't know if you recall the scene in of Tommy course, Boy. Of course, they're driving down the road in this trashed car, and this song comes on. This song sucks. Talk about lame. <laughs> totally. You can change it if you want. I don't care. It's up to you. I can live with it if you can. Suit yourself. And they both kind of give each other a side of a glance like, does he know that I love this song more than life itself? <laughs> but I could never admit it to this guy <laughs> yeah. that I freaking love this song. And so Chris Farley and David Spade are just, go ahead, leave it on. You know, they're just being real cool about it. Yes. And then cut to the scene where they're just screaming out the chorus, crying. Yep. Yep. And this song is just, it is a, it's a sucker song. It suckers you. It's so beautiful. And so, it's just so marvelous. It has a lot of beautiful little hooks in it. But there is one moment that is the sweet spot. Um, let's just listen to the chorus for a second, and then we'll play to the sweet spot. Don't you remember you told me you loved me, baby? You said you'd be coming back this way again, baby. Baby, 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 oh baby, I love you. I really do. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> that is it. The <laughs> song. So I don't want to say the song is over for me now, but that was it. I'm lighting a cigarette now. <laughs> That's funny. This is an example of what I was saying. I would never have thought of that as a sweet spot. It's very personal, and for I, I first listened to the Carpenters 50 years ago. Yeah. That's when I had Carpenter's Records when I was a kid, 50 freaking years ago. Yeah, yeah. And ever since then, I have listened to that moment of that song with special interest. I get it. I totally get it. It's part of who I am now. (laughs) Of of course it is. You'd be hard-pressed to find a band, a group, that plays more elegant, perfect pop music. Yeah, yeah. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos lately, and there's a lot of Carpenter stuff out there. And there's a really amazing concert that's a live concert that was in London. I've seen it. If you have any question about the level of musicianship and skill that Richard and Karen Carpenter had have, watch it, because they blew my mind. Well, Karen Carpenter on the drums, she does this drum thing that is absolutely Oh, yeah, she, she's awesome. Not only is she a great drummer technically, but coming from a musician side of things, there would be a temptation to think, oh, she's the kind of girl that learned to play drums in school band. The well, I think she, she did, but she's freaking amazing. She is. She has a really great feel. There's a thing about drumming when someone plays in the pocket. Yeah. She's a really great drummer. But I'll tell you just a quick aside. My friend Fritz, who's equally a music freak as we are every time i tell him that i appreciate the carpenters he just shakes his head really? in disgust really yes he cannot see anything about them really? that, that's redeeming if you're a guy that digs peter green's guitar in in old in the blues yeah. era fleetwood mac yeah. there's not much about the carpenters right. that's going to right but for people like myself and who's you, more well-rounded do you mean what's that who are more well-rounded do you mean than <laughs> well, fritz kapler I think he's, in a lot of ways, he's sort of more of a purist in terms of his love of very raw, like rock and sure. roll, just rock and roll. I respect roll. that. And and something that has that kind of edge to it. And for me, because I love very produced music like McCartney and Elton and all these great artists that made very produced pieces of music, the Carpenters, I hear the cheese. I hear it. I am absolutely com- completely aware of it, but they're an oddity in that they're so great at being cheesy. That's the thing. They're so great at yeah, it. The other, the other analog to them would be like ABBA. Yes. It's just yes. glorious. Yes. Glorious. So I t- I totally well agree. executed. Genius cheese. Absolutely. I mean, we all got to have cheese sometimes. Totally. And, and You cannot sh- just live on meat alone. No, and I think cheese. a huge part of the Carpenters, for almost everybody who's probably watching this, if you like the Carpenters, 
is that it's so firmly attached to your past. Yes. And it probably drums up these memories of when you were seven or eight or 15 and this is like whoa i made a video recently where i put in a clip of them performing on the ed sullivan show when kids take up a musical instrument it's usually the guitar but karen carpenter was different she chose the drums she got together with the brother richard and the result is the carpenters and there's these close-ups of her when she's very young it's like their first single or second single and there's she's so earnest in her performance and why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. That's a natural gift that she had. When she would sing those songs and deliver those songs, you felt it. Like, she's telling a story. She's telling something that resonates with yeah. her. I, I was actually watching the video of her, kind of her close-up of her face, and I realized that I had stopped breathing. I'm not kidding. I, was I believe like, it. Yeah. It was so stunning to me. You yeah. know, there's something... It's funny you mentioned that about her being so young, because I've been very affected recently... Well, I've been watching a lot more live performances on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, there's, in fact, I should have put in a plug for a Midnight Special. Oh, the totally. The Midnight Special is a show that aired back in the 70s and I think in the early 80s. Yeah. And they were 100% live performances in some cheesy studio, probably in Burbank somewhere. Yeah. And they'd have these world class musicians come in and do their songs live. Yeah. And some of those performances are absolutely mind blowing. Yes. And a couple of the ones that I, I'll mention. I think one of my main imp- impressions as I'm watching this, those people are so young. They're just kids. Yeah. And they're hungry. And yep. one of those yep. was Stevie Nicks singing Rhiannon. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's, it doesn't look like Stevie Nicks. It looks like 25-year-old Stevie Nicks, yeah. this young girl yeah. who has something to prove. Yep. She's not up there in some stadium yep. singing to people who have been listening to her for 30 years. She's playing the song. And probably these people have never heard it before. Yeah. And she's so young and she's so effective. Once in a million years, a little longer. Another one that did the same thing for me, and I'll come back to this later Roger Hodgson. As a young, in as a, Super Tramp. As a young man in Super yeah, Tramp. Yeah. And to see the, the sophisticated music he's playing oh my gosh, at yeah. 26, 27 yeah. years old. Heaven or hell was the journey cold and gave you eyes of steel, shelter behind, painting your mind. your mind it's like what is it like to do something like that at that age anyway well, yeah we've gotten off the track yeah yeah but that was but, fun so my next song sweet spot is a song that, that i've loved for years whoops i think i just did something wrong there you've ruined christmas i've ruined christmas <laughs> this is a song that i've always loved but didn't realize where the sweet spot was until my friend john here he's so much more of a nerd with music than i am he'll he'll take a surround sound SACD or DVD audio or whatever <laughs> and plug it in and then unplug all the channels except for the center channel and record it and then plug all the channels except for the <laughs> rears and record it. So he's got these stripped down John Blackstone mixes of this music. For someone who loves music, it's amazing because all of a sudden you get to, it's like walking into the studio yeah. and you get to look inside the song a little more closely. Yes. And this is one of those songs I've loved, but when I heard this, I loved it more and I found it sweet spot. So this song, everyone knows. Amazing piece of music, Rocket Man by Elton John, um, off of Honky Chateau. There's a synthesizer part in this song, which is kind of buried in the normal single yeah, mix. Yes, it is. But John gave me this reduced mix that just has the surround vocals and the synthesizer. And when I heard the synthesizer and I heard the counterpoint 
of the song, yes, it just blew my mind, and now yes. I absolutely focus on it whenever I hear it. I know exactly so now, what you're talking so, about. And, and actually, if I'm not mistaken, there's actually two synthesizer parts. There's there's this part I'm going to play, but then you gave me another mix, and it's like, that is a different synthesizer part. Like, they're playing together. It was performed by the recording engineer, the guy who engineered the recording. Henschel is his last name. Okay. He did all of that synthesizer stuff, and those are his parts. Those are his creations, and that needs to be credited to him. Yeah, because it's, it's absolutely beautiful. It is not just parroting the tune. Nope. It's a counterpoint. It is completely. Here is the hidden synthesizer part from Rocket Man, the sweet spot. And it's big. Davy Johnston on slide guitar. Here she comes. This is where it gets really good. Yeah. And that's it. That is so cool. It is. It's just freaking amazing. It is. And it's it's just just far enough back in the mix to where you you hear it but it's like a it's like a, a treasure that you when once it you is. find it you just yeah sweet spot yeah, it, all yeah. the way and it, you do hear it right at the very end you can hear it pretty well in the radio mix but it's something to listen for and it's my sweet spot from oh. Elton John this is truly a sweet spot every time i hear this song and this moment happens my heart melts this is one of the most beautiful songs written by guys that have written certainly some of the most beautiful and amazing music their whole career is sweet spot yeah This. This is the ultimate spot right here. Love is such a beautiful thing. Oh, you make my world. That's it. That's the spot. Amazing. There is a midnight special. Is that right? And they sing about six songs during the course of the show. I haven't seen that yet. Ballers. Just incredible. I can imagine. And they're totally live, and they sound like a million bucks. Remember, you got brain in your heart. Someone said, I'm talking about you. Am I on once to open up your room? Barry wrote some amazing songs on his own. Like he wrote songs for the album he did with Barbara Streisand. But when they would get together, either the two of them or the three of them, they wrote just truly some of the best songs ever written. Yep, their songs are great. They are. Okay, my last Sweet Spot song is actually a song that was underscored for me by John. So I've always loved the Beatles, I always loved George, but John says, listen to this song, pay special attention to it, and I did, and this like blows my mind. So this song is uh, Beware of Darkness, Off of All Things Must Pass. And let me just say one thing, is that the reason why this part is the sweet spot for me is not so much musically as it is lyrically. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, George was a conflicted fellow, but he was smart, and I think he was very sensitive. Based on this, I think he had a lot of sadness in his life. And I know that I have, and John and I have both had issues with depression, which is a real thing. And it's mind-blowingly 
gut-wrenchingly painful. It's like having nausea in your brain. Wow, what he said what he it. says in this in this line he's talking about sadness. Yeah. He says beware of sadness. Yeah. But the last line he says and that is not what you are here for. Yep. And when I hear that it may it, today I was listening to it as I was previewing the song and it brings tears to my eyes. Yeah. And the fact that he acknowledges that to be sad and down is not what your life is about is really a profound thing to me and is very inspiring. And inspiration doesn't defeat depression, but it sure helps. This is the exact same spot of the same song that I chose. When he goes to that, that is not what we are here for. There's this incredibly beautiful chord change. First time I heard that and realized that, I thought George is my brother. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he really is. Yeah. He's been he's been there. I can tell. Yeah, for sure. There's this handful of songs that he wrote that are to me the most beautiful songs ever written. This one definitely contends in that position. This song has always been so moving to me. Um, the chord changes are so beautiful, and the I don't know. It's so George. I don't know how else to say well, it. It's it, so George. It's such a friend. He's saying, you know, look out for these things. I don't want you to be sad. It's almost like he's preaching to himself. That's how oh, I for sure. Say, yeah. But you know, the thing is, is that George's catalog doesn't match Lennon McCartney. But having said that, the songs that were his best songs That's what I mean. stand up to anything John and Paul did. That's what I mean. Something. That's what I mean. Yes. Here Comes the Sun, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Those songs are all... I mean, Here Comes the Sun is the number one Beatles stream. I know it. Consistently. I know it. It's the most popular Beatles song among all the world. You should watch what Keith Richards says about that song. Keith Richards, of all guys, says, Here Comes the Sun. I mean, come on, man. (laughs) Yeah. George found his his place, and I'm grateful for his music. Yeah. 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 We have a camera going, we have these microphones in front of us, but this is no different than what we do every time we get together. It is, it is. We're just <laughs> recording. Yeah, we, we basically play each other songs we've heard or things that we've discovered anew. Or Music's one of the best things in life. It is, for sure. And so, embrace it. Cheers. Merry Christmas. I guess this is going to be a Christmas program because there's there's lights Yeah, in what, what were we, we going to do the worst Christmas songs? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, we'll... Maybe you won't. Next Christmas. Next Christmas. <laughs> That's a great one to start with. Next Christmas. No, last Christmas, oh, you give me my heart. Oh. The very next day, you gave it away. That song, I swear to you, is just, if that if there was a song I could remove from the, the public consciousness, it would be that song, I think. It wouldn't be Disco Duck? No. <laughs> Disco <laughs> Duck is far less offensive. <laughs> you may be right. <laughs> Good night. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you can have my credit card, baby, but keep your red hot fingers off of my heart, lady. What song is that? Credit card, baby, man. Is That's that the name of the song. It's called well, Credit Card, baby. Yeah. And it's a wham song. Wow. I thought I'd heard it all. Mm-hmm.